Epilepsy affects over 50 million people worldwide, and new research suggests our gut microbes may be a part of the story. Studies show that the gut microbiome changes in epilepsy, but results are scattered across dozens of papers, making comparisons difficult. That's why we built SeizureBiomeDB, the first open access database unifying all gut microbiome alterations in epilepsy. Curated from over 80 human, pediatric, and animal studies, it links microbial shifts to seizure types and treatments. Built with React, Express, and PostgreSQL, it securely organizes over 240 microbial taxa and 26 metabolites, all connected to trusted sources like NCBI and Backdrive. Researchers can search by epilepsy type, age group, or treatment and instantly visualize patterns through heat maps and bar charts. Seizure BiomeDB ultimately bridges clinical and mechanistic studies connecting the brain and the gut through open science. You can explore it at seizurebiomedb.ca, connecting the gut and the brain one study at a time. Blood clots can save your life by sealing a wound, but if they form in the wrong place, they can put your life in danger. When a clot blocks blood flow to the brain, it can trigger a deadly stroke, an event twice as common in type 2 diabetics. The reason why still isn't clear, and with most looking at blood sugar or insulin, I'm exploring something different. Islet amyloid polypeptide, or IEPP, a kind of biological Velcro. In type 2 diabetes, too much IEPP sticks together in the pancreas, damaging insulin-producing cells. If these sticky proteins enter the bloodstream, their interactions could trigger clot formation and strokes. In the lab, we grow clots with and without IEPP, examining their structures under the microscope. Normal clots are smooth and stringy, but adding a tiny amount of IEPP results in the growth of huge protein clumps. And the IEPP doesn't just stick. It weaves through the clot and builds up around the edges, possibly making the structure stronger. We're now asking if these diabetic clots form more easily or resist breakdown, and if their overall chemistry is different. With more studies on this biological Velcro, we could reveal a crucial link between diabetes and stroke, and learn how to break it. There is a lack of accessible tools for scientists. Commercial softwares are often expensive, while open source options tend to be difficult to use and unreliable. To address this gap, we develop Open Behavior Lab, a free, robust, and easy to use platform for animal behavior analysis. The core of our platform is a novel self-supervised learning-based tracking algorithm, which enable more robust tracking without require manual annotation of data. On the right, you can see examples of our software interfaces, which includes modules supporting every stage of behavior analysis. We also collaborate with neuroscience students at McGill to test our system on the novel object recognition task. The results show that Open Behavior Lab is not only more efficient than commercial tools like Isovision, but also more accurate. You can find our open source project on the right. Thank you for the time. Today I'll share how we're promoting openness in non-human primate research. Of a thousand therapies, 30 pass phase 1, 2 pass phase 2, and only one passes all clinical trials. Bridging research gaps between species can help here. By using marmosets and treating them like patients, we can aid in translation. We use an automated touchscreen system for training and testing where marmosets work at their own pace. This gives us data on their daily activities, showing when they like to work, which subjects work together, and who likes to hog the system. We also do non-invasive brain imaging, 
Monkeys are trained in a mock environment leading up to scans, and when they meet predefined requirements and aren't stressed, we bring them to the scanner. We print helmets to fit the monkeys by transforming their CT data into a 3D printable model. This system produces images like the ones you see here. We've published a paper on the MRI coil in open access. Pipelines, data, and designs are hosted on the Marmoset Brain Connectome website under Creative Commons licenses. Thank you for your time. Please enjoy the rest of the symposium.